Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on Gran Turismo Sport. We're back with FIA highlights at Circuit de la Sarve in Group 1. So this was the FIA Nations race. So the popular cars was the Mazda 787, also the Porsche, also the Audi R8 and also the Peugeot. So that was the majority of cars being used in this combination. Now in qualifying, we managed to get ourselves a penalty, which meant our lap wasn't particularly great, but luckily we still managed to qualify in P11. Without the P11, without the penalty, possibly we would have been able to start in the top five. But yeah, let's see what we can do. Standing start, always going to be chaos with a standing start in group one because of the difference in cars on acceleration. We get a really good start though, managing to get away from that start very well overtaking the other 787 there on the left hand side and going into turn one now if you look in the mirror as we go into the braking zone we break nice and early however we get hit from behind a nice whack in the rear pushed into the guards and again another hit from the left hand side and yeah luckily for us though the contact actually kind of work in our favor they pushed me through the pack in a way and we got ourselves up to p5 and yeah obviously there's no need for me to back out because we were the car being hit and pushed about so yeah we carry on and get on with the race so let's have a little look at what happens here so as we get away from the start we get a really good start you can see their survey on the left hand side in the same car as us doesn't quite get the traction off the line that we get and we're into the braking zone and we break really early you can see i'm on the brakes already here and car behind hits us and then another car just comes and pushes us there Trevisio just nudges into the side and it's all a bit chaotic a lot of messy stuff going you can see cars going off in the distance and again it does bring into question the penalty system. And also another thing, this is the guy that kind of started a lot of the chaos. Started from P20 in the hybrid car. And this kind of justifies why I wish that the car classes were separated a bit more. Because he's coming from P20, into the, hits the car in front that then hits us. And yeah, this is what's going to happen though. If you've got a group of cars that are not matched in the way they drive. Some have got hybrids, some don't. It's just going to lead to chaos. It's unpredictable driving. And it's kind of why I wish that Gran Turismo Sport or GT7 would separate the car classes. Get Group C cars in their own group. Put the hybrid cars in their own group. Put the concept cars in their own group. And I do think that we'd have more car classes to race, which is always good for variety. And it'd just mean better racing. I think it'd be a lot cleaner because that is probably the cause of a lot of the issues with this group at standing starts. It's the hybrid versus the non-hybrids and it just causes chaos. Luckily for myself, we got away with that and we're up into P5. So actually in a really good position here. P5 was over 300 points, which was my target because this was our second race of the day. I couldn't do the first two races because I had to pick my partner up from work. So yeah, we jumped on on slot three. Points were dropping down a bit. We've still got some very fast drivers in this lobby. Antomics, who is very, very fast around Circuit de la Sarf. Obviously, there in P1. So, we got this run down this straight now. See, we didn't get the best exit off the chicane. Got a little bit of out of shape. And Survey is going to go past us there in the other 787 as we approach the Audi R18, which, again, fast on acceleration, but not so great on top speed. So, coming out of the slow right-hand corner, we get a nice pull out of this corner. You can see also changing gear. I think Servo was over revving his car because you can see here, you can hear it on his engine. As we shift gear, you can still hear his car revving out and that's going to cost him pace down the straight. So you do need to short shift this slightly. You can see I figured this out because I watched the time trial of the top time and I could see the optimal point. As we go down the inside there, I think the R18 didn't know we were going down that inside. Kind of comes across a bit, but yeah, he's got a penalty anyway for track limits. So we should be able to get past him in the next braking zone. So as we go into the braking zone, he breaks a little bit late, goes wide, comes back across the track. We go to the right hand side. I'm not sure if he thought we were going to go down the left or not, but yeah, no harm done there. He takes that penalty and we're up into P4. So in a very good position in this race so far. And like I say, this combination isn't normally a very strong one for me because this track I do suffer. It's mainly this section. I'm all right on the rest of the track. It's just as we come into this section, um, we normally mess this up as we messing it up right now on this lap. I can normally do it a bit better than what we're doing right now. But yeah, you can see survey right up behind us there. As I got into the corner, all out of shape. I went in too fast and yeah, didn't really get the line through there. But managing to hook that corner up quite nicely there, the left-hand corner going on to the final few chicanes as we come through to the braking zone. Yeah, doing that quite nice and getting a gap, getting the gap back up to about three, four attempts there to the car behind and now into the final chicane and just trying to keep it smooth. Early upshift to third gear also there. 
just stops you having to up shift it from second to third gear with this car every gear shift costs you time so you're trying to reduce the amount of up shifts you're having to do to gain a lot of pace with this car so into the braking zone making sure we brake early be careful of the track limits for here because they're the most unpredictable thing i've ever come across there and yeah we do that pretty nicely using just pretty much onto the white lines with both tires um on the inside there so using the limits to the most there i think they're getting away with it though and no penalty as we work our way into this other corner that you can easily pick up a penalty as you throw it in here so i was very cautious on this corner because it, i didn't really want to pick up penalties this is a combination where if you can get away without getting penalties you're going to get a pretty decent result especially from the start we've got here so again onto the straight and you can see the audi r18 suffering with that lack of pace on the straights and he's not able to keep up with us on this long long run all the way into the next braking zone so you can see he's losing the slipstream and now he's lost the slipstream into the braking zone we got will up ahead there i think with a penalty so that's going to affect him quite badly as we go through the penalty zone you can see there coming out the edge, the penalty zone and you can see there will i think is just dropping off there in the distance there it might have been will or it might have been police for actually that had the penalty on that run there but we got survey now back behind us and very very close to the slipstream so still in p4 though this is looking pretty good so far we can see survey and will i'm sorry not survey we can see Khalees Fort and Will Murdoch there battling up ahead of us. And I think, again, they were in two separate cars, one hybrid, one non-hybrid. So we're going to skip ahead to, again, this section where I'm not that great. We do it a bit better this time, but still not particularly brilliant through here. And then through this right-hand corner again, just trying to hug it to that apex. I just had trouble trying to get this car into these apexes. I think if I practice it more, we could get that section right and be a little bit faster. But yeah. Um, we've, we've done a few practices the day before, but we hadn't done slot one or two, which was probably, it probably would have helped us a little bit through that section, because I like to get a rhythm through there. But then into the final section, going over the line, and we're still in P4, and we luckily haven't got a penalty on that lap. However, as we come up here, you can see, we're going to try and make sure we take this nice. So we've got the Audi R18 now behind us, though. You can see that the Audi R18 is battling with service. So we're just trying to get through here nice and clean, not risking the track limits there, and again, being very safe on the track limits there nowhere near picking up a penalty and pushing on now just to try and stay ahead of this group you can see that behind behind us we're building a bit of a gap up but also in front of us we can see will murdoch not too far in the distance there with um, a podium position so we're driving quite well here we're staying with um the group in front but in terms of will and um, we got cleese that actually looks like he's pulled away a little bit and we've got Antomics that is absolutely flying out of the front. There's not really much we can do in, to, in terms of staying with him. So we can again skip ahead to the end of lap three as we come through to this section. We've still got Survey behind us. And we drive this a little bit better this time. Keeping it nice and smooth through here. Getting it into the apex. And you can see again, nice and tight to the apex. And then through this left-hand corner, just trying to upshift the fourth gear early. So you don't have to do that shift on the exit and keep the momentum out there. So not too bad that time. A little bit better than the previous time but you can see up ahead from us we have wheel with another penalty there so this is looking interesting because if we can just keep this car nice and smooth by the time he takes that penalty we could be very very close to picking up his slipstream so over the line and now into lap four of this race we still got a nice gap to survey so he's not really in the slipstream zone yet and we're keeping it pretty close anyway we we're able to keep that gap pretty much static to survey however we come through here I felt like we did that pretty much perfectly. However, the game gave us a half a second penalty and the track limits are so random on that first chicane. It's very hard to figure out because we watch it again here. We see my right hand tires are always within the white line on the right hand side. They don't go over it. We check this live on stream as well. The right hand tires were always and again the left hand tires always on the left on the, within the white line. We checked it on stream and they don't go over the white line. However, it is a penalty. It's just one of them random things on GT Sport. It's always been like this at Circuit de la Sarf. It's very hard to, to not get a penalty there. It's easy to pick them up. And yeah, a lot of people, obviously, it's not just myself. Wheel up ahead, also getting penalties. Other drivers getting penalty. And that's the way it is. It kind of evens itself out with the times that you do get penalties and the times that you get away with them. I think lap two, we could have got a penalty looking at what we've done there because it was identical to lap two, how I took that corner. But lap two, we didn't that time we did so we take the penalty and unfortunately as we went into the braking zone for the chicane i cut the corner again and picked up another one second so we lost 1.5 we had 1.5 seconds worth of penalty so we lost that position 
and we also gave the Al Aldi R18 the chance to get right close to us. So without doing that, I think we would have been okay to just about stay ahead of Survey. Probably would have given the slipstream, but we might have been able to just stay ahead of him. But yeah, we lost out quite a big chunk of time there with that 1.5 seconds worth of penalty. So now we've just got to try and regroup and see if we can try and push and catch up to Survey there in P4. And again, through here, just trying to get it on the apex. You see the difference between the Group C cars and the hybrid cars. Through here, the hybrid cars were so fast. And the problem is the Group C cars just don't have the grip through them type of corners. But then you get onto acceleration zones once you're past the hybrid kicking in. And yeah, the Group C car just flies away. So into the braking zone, you see we're actually in the slipstream briefly there. But as we get on the power, obviously, we can't really put the power down as easily. We can see behind us there, we've got the Audi R18 very close, but he's not able to do much because once we get past 150, his car just slows down massively compared to these Group C cars. So again, we were so close to the slipstream to server. We picked it up briefly, but obviously once we got on the traction, we're picking up that dirty air, we lost it. And now we're going side by side. This is gonna lose us a little bit of time as we're not able to take the proper line into this corner. And yet yeah, we're back down to just under nine temps, around nine temps behind them. So that again, if we could have took the proper line through there, we might have been able to creep into the slipstream because you can see we're tantalizingly close within a tenth of that slipstream. So yeah, if we didn't get that side by side action there through the corner, we might have got the slipstream back. So a bit frustrating, but yeah, we're still in this battle for P4. Can we stay with survey? The pace between myself and Survey was so evenly matched here. It was pretty much identical. So it's going to be very difficult if he doesn't make any mistakes as we look up ahead there. And Will has picked up another penalty there, as you can see, going through the penalty zone. So quite frustrating with the penalties that we got because without them, we might have been able to pick up a podium. But again, like I say, it's, it's happening to everyone. Everyone's getting penalties. And it's one of them tracks where they're very unpredictable. It's not the easiest track to judge where the limits are. And also when you're pushing in cars like these, Group 1 cars, it's very difficult to not overdrive it sometimes in the corner. So again, through here, early upshift into third gear there. Got a little bit sideways off the kerb. Luckily didn't lose too much time, only a tenth or two there as we managed to save it and keep the power down and work our way up this really long straight. So fast forward in the action here as we're just trying to stay with survey and see if we can get into that slipstream. Will we get close enough though? We needed to get the slipstream and probably pass him before the final sector because there's, once you're behind someone in there, you're just gonna lose any time that you gain. And yeah, you just, it's really difficult. You can see again, getting very close to picking up the slipstream, but again, we're just not close enough. So again, we're gonna have to just follow through here. And again, we can't really do much because even if we catch him up, we're gonna get that dirty air and suffer quite a bit. So coming up to the final lap nearly now, just over a lap to go. And this is a really intense battle. I'm trying to push as hard as I can without picking up, a pen picking up another penalty. And yeah, just hoping that he might be able to pick up a penalty by overdriving it, over going over the limits a little bit too much somewhere and picking up half a second. So we've got to put the pressure on him just in case he manages you know, to do some a mistake somewhere. We can also see Will in P3. So you never know in these races. We're going to keep driving as much as hard as we can and over the line for the final lap in this race. And yeah, it's looking quite, it's still going to be a good result if we can manage to get P5. I would be 100% happy with that from the start of the race, from starting from P11. 309 points would be brilliant. So that's what these points were available for P5. 309, I can't remember what P4 was. I think it was like just under 320 or around 320 for P4. So if we can grab P4, it'd be brilliant. So working our way again, trying to get a good exit off this corner to try and get in the slipstream. You can see into the apex very early and onto the throttle very early. I actually hooked that up really nicely. I was wondering if we might get a track limit penalty because I really attacked it and just went for it to see if we can pick it up. But unfortunately, we didn't get a penalty, but unfortunately, we're just outside that slipstream again. You can see only a tenth away. It's so, it's so close, but yet so far and then into the braking zone again. We're gonna try and be aggressive through here and see if we can get a really strong exit. Hooking it up quite nicely there. Unfortunately, Survey really nails it as well and manages to keep that gap up a little bit. He actually gains half a tenth there and onto the straight again. And still under a second though, it's not far from that slipstream range. We only need a tenth or so here or there and we'll pick up that slipstream, but we need to get that slipstream, like I say, before the final sector and overtaking before the final sector. So if we could get it after this corner, it would be absolutely perfect because then we could maybe get a pass on the final straight before the um, 
where the final corner, the, the final fast flowing corners are, and it's really impossible to do much once the car's behind you there. So again, we're we're on a personal best lap here. We're doing okay. We're not flying. We're, we're driving pretty well. Again, we're trying to be a little bit cautious that we don't overdrive and pick up a penalty. But you can see Survey is also driving extremely well in front of us. He's hooking up the corners. We're pretty much identical. You can see on the Delta, it's not really... It's, it's pretty much fluctuating between 8, 9 and 1 second the gap. It's not really changed at all in this last few laps. We're literally caught, taking each corner identical and it's great it's really enjoyable pushing as much as you can but it's frustrating when you just want to pick up that slipstream and try and get a battle going because if you get the slipstream on this combination it's so strong as we come through to this final section again we hook that up onto the power nicely and again getting very close to the slipstream but again we're not going to be able to do much because we're too far back even if we do get into the slipstream from here we're too far back to really do much and again you can see back up to around one second and then we're going to come to the final section, which, again, is not, there's nothing you can do. Once you're behind here, P5 is where we're going to finish, pretty much. There's no, unless he picks up a penalty somewhere. Again, push through here. Can we gain some time? We do it quite nice this time. Again, we're trying to drive as fast as we can because I want to be within one second of him. Because if he picks up half a second penalty, if we're within one second, we'll actually take that position off him with the way the penalty system works. So... Again, through here, running a little bit wide there, not really hooking that up. And then, yeah, we've only got a few corners to go, and it looks like we're going to come away from this race with a P5. We look up ahead again, and Will picked up another penalty up there. So clearly driving fast, but picking up a lot of penalties, and that's the thing. There's two ways of driving this track. You can take no risk and not get penalties, or you can risk everything and possibly pick up a few penalties. But yeah, we take a P5. Really happy with that result in the FIA top split race. 309 points. Hopefully you lot enjoyed it. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And we'll keep these highlights videos coming along with daily race videos. And along with other videos, track guides and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll see you all soon. Thanks again for watching everyone.